What's up guys, Blake Pitts here from the YouTube channel, East Texas Value Boys. Today we're gonna to show you how to run a trot line. Now there's several different types of trot lines. These are the kinds I use, they're pre-made. You can make your own. You can get different kinds from different stores. These are at Walmart. They come in a plastic bag, just like this, big plastic bag. What they have in it is all the hooks you need, right down there. That's actually two sets of hooks. And uh, it comes with the line that you need to run all the way across and it's got these beads on it for attaching the clips on it onto the line. And what I'm gonna do right now is show you how to actually tie the hooks and the clips. I've already done most of them just cause it takes a little while. I don't wanna take up the whole video time tying clips and hooks. And what you're gonna do is, what I like to do is do the hook first. Take one end of it, run it through the hook, the eye of the hook at least, and all I do is twist it up like this. I go a few times, bring it back down, come right through that hole, and I hold this straight with the shaft of the hook. Pull it tight, just like that. That's all you need. Then you take the other end and you get the swivel. And I do this second because the swivel spins, so it'll undo a lot of the stuff you do or a lot of the twists you do. So you wanna be real precise with it. And I grab it right up here and twist it. I just make the swivel twist. Then I hold the eye on it so it doesn't unspin. Run it through the eye of the string. Same thing with the shaft of the hook. Hold it straight with the swivel. Oh, sometimes it'll do that. You just gotta get over it. You just pull it tight down. There you go. Super tight, ready to go. Now, the way I run trot lines, is I get it, and I like to submerge my trot lines so people can't see them. Because people will hit your trot lines. Maybe just to check them, see what kind of fish they got on them. Maybe to take your fish. Well, I like my fish, I work hard to catch them. So I like to keep them all hidden. Make sure you got plenty of slack. And all you're going to want to do is come down here, tie whatever knot you prefer that you think is going to hold, and let it be. A lot of moving on here. And let it be the base for the strength of the line. Underwater, holding tight. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to stretch this line all the way over to the other bank. That way we can clear this whole area. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, we stretched the line all the way across from there over here, tied it off to another cypress knee. And now what we're gonna do is you wanna get this line super tight. And by that, I mean, you want it to be able to be seen from here to there on top of the water for now, because we're gonna put a weight in the center of it and that's gonna submerge the whole line and it'll keep it underwater. But the way you wanna do that is you wanna pull all the excess slack out. And to do that, you're gonna take all the extra and just wrap it around the side of the piece. And this might take a little bit, but trust me, that's the best way to do it without having to just pull a whole bunch of excess line and then tie off your knot. And then you're stuck with a whole lot of extra line just laying off to the side, getting tangled up around everything. And then you gotta find a way to get rid of it, store it. Some people cut it. I don't cut it just because I pay good money for it. If there's a way to keep it intact, I will. Because if you come to, if you pull this line from here and want to use it in a different place, and it turns out the river is a little bit wider in that place, then, you know, what are you going to do when you ain't got enough line? Check that line out. Can you see it? Maybe not. But if I pull it just tight, just like that, just a little bit, you see it comes right on top of the water. So that's about what you want. I'm gonna give her about one or two more times around this knee to get it like super tight. And then after that, you're gonna push off. And the first thing you wanna do, in my opinion, 
but this is a busy river we're on and a lot of people come out here just for joy rides on their boat jet skis pontoons whatever it is they come out here and they come through flying dang this thing does not want to pull are we caught on something back there There you go. Alright, there we go. Alright, so you want to go all the way out to the center of your trot line. Once you get about where you feel the center, deepest part of the river, right in the middle, you're going to take a weight. Michael, if you want to hand me the camera for a second, go back there and grab a weight. Alright, so you get to the center of your line, you get a nice weight, something nice and with a little weight too, it ain't got to be just the heaviest thing in the world. That's another good thing about pulling your line tight. If you drop it before you got the weight on it, you can just pick it right back up out of the water. And the thing with this, you just want to put a nice little knot in it. It ain't got to be nothing fancy. Just tie it to it. Hold it tight. Because the whole goal of this thing right here is to just keep your, water, or keep your line sunk underwater and it pulls it down to v-shape keeps it out of the way of any boaters coming through that way the props not catching it keeps it in lower deeper water for the bigger fish to be more compelled to grab it so then i'm gonna show you how to put the hooks on the line and then that'll be the end of the video you'll know how to run a trot line just like me Sometimes on these lines, it's supposed to have two beads on it. This one only has one. That's the only bad thing about buying a pre-made line. You don't know if it's going to have any manufacturer flaws in it, but this line does. Most of them usually have one or two. I've seen some with five. But there's no way, or there's there's a way that you can fix that. You can go buy clamps to put on the line, and it'll make it a good enough line again. You put a hook on it, but... Here we are next to the, to the next two beads. You take your hook, pull it out of the line. You got your clip right here. All you do is compress that clip right below it. Make that come out and use that hook onto the line and then let it go. It's on there nice and tight now. When that fish hooks on, gets on that hook after you bait it, it's got this swivel right here and the swivel allows it to move around a circle go any type of direction it won't without losing too much tension and it keeps that fish on the line so you do that down one way of the trot line then you go down the other and do it and then you apply your bait and then with that weight in the middle you want to slowly let your trot line down at the end because if you just let it go with that weight it'll pop and it'll make most of that bait shake off and there'll be a whole lot of work done for nothing so, that's how to run a trot line thank you for watching like the video subscribe to the channel you know, leave a comment if you have any, you know, comments, questions, concerns, you know, any of that. If you uh, got your own way of running it, you want me to try it, I'll be willing to do it. Uh, I urge you all to get out here and try this. Trot lining is so much fun. You never know what you're going to catch. You get channels, blues, flatheads with the right bait. I catch soft tail turtles on this. Something just popped over there. This is a lively area. I've got really good hopes about this area. Till then, see y'all next time.